is June, which means it's almost been six months since the release of these headphones, the AirPods Max. So I thought now would be a great time to update you guys on just how I feel about these headphones after owning them for about half of a year. Another reason it's a great time to do this update video is because Apple just rolled out the update that brings lossless audio to Apple Music and Dolby Atmos support to the AirPods Max, both of which we'll talk about later on in this video. For right now though, I wanna start off by talking about the build quality of these headphones and how they've been holding up over the time that I've had them. When I ordered the AirPods Max, there was really only one colorway of these headphones that would ship pretty much immediately, and that was the silver and white pair, so that's what I went with. The design is definitely a little polarizing. Some people love them, some people hate them. I still really like them. I think they're one of the best looking headphones out there. They're very recognizable, very premium looking, and the rotating dial is very tactile and intuitive to use. Initially though, I was worried about two things. Number one, I thought these headphones would get very dirty very quickly, and number two, I thought I would punch a hole in this tiny, delicate headband within the first few months. Thankfully, neither of those things have happened, at least not yet. I use these headphones for a few hours, about four to five times a week, and the headband and the ear pads have not yellowed over time or anything like that. They're also just as comfortable as the day I bought them. They're on the heavy side, as I mentioned in my full review, but I can still wear them for hours at a time without getting uncomfortable. These are all things that you should expect from a pair of headphones that cost as much as these do, and I'm happy to report that I have no complaints about anything on that front. You know what else I have no complaints about? the noise cancellation and transparency modes on AirPods Max. I've tested a lot of wireless noise canceling headphones and the AirPods Max do an incredible job with both of them. They're truly the best of the best when it comes to that, especially the transparency mode. Once in transparency mode, it really feels like you aren't wearing headphones. It's almost like they're completely open back and the sound just flows straight through them. Talking to someone sounds completely natural, like I'm talking to you right now, and even the sound of your own voice doesn't sound weird like it does with a lot of other closed back headphones that feature noise pass-through modes. I'm not gonna go in depth about talking about noise cancellation in this video because I already did that in a previous video comparing the AirPods Max to the Sony WH-1000XM4s. All you need to know is that they're still one of the best headphones out there for noise cancellation. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Apple just pushed out an update that brings lossless audio to Apple Music and Dolby Atmos support to the AirPods Max. The lossless audio part is kind of irrelevant here. The AirPods Max are a pair of Bluetooth headphones that use AAC or SBC, both of which cannot carry a lossless signal. The AirPods Max can play the new Dolby Atmos tracks that were added to Apple Music though but this feature has been both overwhelming and underwhelming at the same time. Yes, it actually does make the tracks feel like they're being recorded around you. It gives the illusion that the space has opened up for a much more immersive feel, but it comes at a hefty cost. In a lot of tracks, it sounds like the vocals were being pushed away behind some of the other instruments even. There's a lack of clarity in some of the Dolby Atmos tracks and the volume and overall energy is sapped from them too. But look, that shouldn't deter you from the fact that the AirPods Max have excellent sound quality even when not listening to Dolby Atmos tracks. I will add a little bit of a disclaimer here. I am not, nor will I ever be, an audiophile. For a more expert opinion on sound quality, I'll leave a link to the Sound Guys review in the description down below. I'm definitely more of an average consumer when it comes to headphones. With that out of the way, I think the AirPods Max has what I would call a very neutral sound. To me, they sound absolutely fantastic. The mids and highs for vocals are very crisp, and the low end is nice and tight. The sound isn't over-exaggerated much in any direction, and that might actually turn some people off of them. People that are used to more bass-heavy headphones may actually find the sound of the AirPods Max a little underwhelming. I myself prefer more bass in my music since I listen to a lot of EDM, so I usually listen to the AirPods Max with the bass booster preset on through Apple Music, which ends up sounding a lot more energetic to my ear. The AirPods Max still overall gets a solid thumbs up from me in the sound quality department. However, there are still elements of these headphones that can be frustrating, like the fact that we still do not have a way to power these headphones off manually. I was hoping that Apple would address this by pushing a firmware update to the AirPods Max that would let us hold down a combination or even just one of the buttons for a few seconds to shut them down completely. But alas, we do not. For those of you that don't know, Apple's solution to save battery when the headphones are not in use is to put them into a low power state when the headphones have been stationary for five minutes or when you put them into the carrying case. This is a really convoluted solution that can make the experience of owning these headphones frustrating at times. 
Let me explain. On the one hand, I get why Apple would do this. The first stage of low power mode keeps Bluetooth and Find My on so that it would be easy to reconnect the headset as soon as you put the headphones back onto your head. It would also make it a lot easier to track the headphones down if you leave it somewhere or if it was stolen. However, even if you put the headphones into the smart case, which looks ridiculous by the way, it will stay in that low power mode for a full 18 hours before it goes into an even lower power state, meaning it's still draining battery inside the case and there's no way to manually shut that down. You can imagine where I'm going with this. It means that the AirPod Max very often falls short of the 20 hours of claimed battery life. I think if you listen to music for a long period of time across the span of a day or two, then yeah, sure, that amount of listening time is definitely possible. But if you're like me, you're gonna pick them up and use them for a few hours, then put them away in their case or just put them down somewhere for a day or two and then rinse and repeat. Every time you do that, you're going to be wasting battery life since the headphones never shut down. They only swap between two different low power modes. Sometimes I'll put the headphones away at 10 to 15% battery and then pick them up a few days later and they'll be just completely dead. If I had to give an estimate, I'd say I get closer to 14 or 15 hours of life before they need to be recharged again. That's not horrible, but it would be so much better if Apple would just let me shut them down on my own. Okay, so with all that in mind, do I regret buying the AirPods Max? No. After spending nearly six months with these headphones, I absolutely do not regret buying them. They're built extremely well, they have some of the best noise cancellation and transparency modes out of any wireless headphones out there, and they sound fantastic. A better question to ask is if I would recommend them, and that answer is a lot more complicated. Yes, I love my AirPods Max, but I cannot in good conscience recommend them to most people. They're just too darn expensive. These headphones cost me over 900 Canadian dollars, which is just crazy for a pair of headphones that doesn't have support for higher quality codecs or even a 3.5 millimeter jack for wired listening. For that price, you can pick up a pair of Sony WH-1000XM4s, which are also fantastic, and a pair of AirPods Pro earbuds for on the go. If the price is no worry for you, then yes, by all means, pick up a pair of these and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. I love them but I'd be a dishonest fool if I didn't tell you that there are other options out there like the XM4s that are 90% as good for less than half the price. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.